The YouTube channel is on tour. We're on an adventure. Oh! Voila. We're down in Penzance. We've come to see Julian, the guitar doctor. My entire working life is stood on this little carpeted area, which is actually uh, under full heating panel, which I've built in. Oh, wow. Because the wind is here. <laughs> it gets so cold. Anything can happen. Anything yeah. can um, yeah. be achieved. Well, like this. A vintage rally with a little picture of a tractor. How can I not stop at that on the way back from Julian? Let's see how it goes. Wait, series one. Cool. Never seen so many series ones. Maybe this is the solution. Maybe I need to get one of these old 1930s trucks so I can move the rattlers around. That's so cool. Look at all these tractors. now it's absolutely chucking it down brand new camera is now completely soaked i hope it's waterproof really oh look there's even a motorbike display let's go and have a look at the bikes It's yours? Yes. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's an extraordinary thing. Very cool. Are you the gent from the telly on the... Uh, yes. So, yeah, I thought you yeah, were. Yeah. I thought I recognised you. Well done. Thank you. Well, yeah. well done to you. No, I built it up from... Uh, it's the engines either side of Billy's, which is a 197. Although the car's 195, they couldn't race with the flat valves because they couldn't lubricate them when they raised the steam pressure. So it's, uh, the steam pressure was raised from 400 psi to 800 psi Whoa. for racing. 800 um, psi. 800 psi we run, and it's red hot superheated steam. So it's fairly, it's quite powerful. Jeez. I mean, the, in 1907, the letter back to the owner said that it was then capable of 120 mile an hour. 
and it beat the Stanley that held the world speed record on two occasions it raced against it. It beat it both times and that had the record at 127. It was lapping on a field like this, uh, averaging 74 mile an hour wow. on dirt, trotted on, you know, on, on the trotting horse track. Yeah. Boxing Day 1999, it somersaulted down the track and burnt out on the track. Oh no! Uh, the Chicago Herald said the most spectacular accident in motor racing history. I rebuilt it from scratch. For, uh, I, started, uh, with, I started with just nine pictures. So it had been rebuilt three times in its racing career. So I thought, well let's rebuild it again. It goes like stink, it's quite, it's quite... So it's that's the gear, quite, is there a gearbox I guess? No, well we've got one speed. One speed, that's it, so it's just a drive. We, normally you'd have two speeds in the back axle. But this was a special casting uh, made for, for Whistling Billy. But uh, luckily the son of White decided he was going to build a Billy. Never, he never got it finished at all. But he made two castings and I had one of the castings. How did you get hold of that? Well, I just happened to go into the bloke's workshop who had it. No way. And it's a white engine. It's a white engine, okay. It's actually the white sewing machine company at this stage. Uh -huh. In 1906, they went from the white sewing machine to, to whites. And then, right. then they made lorries till the 1990s. Just, yeah, just, just literally, of course. No, we cleared by about yeah. half an inch. <laughs> yeah, it was about that. Oh, I see, look, white sewing machine coat. Yeah. Right. So what was that engine built for? What was it designed for? It's, to a, it's a touring car. It's for a um, built to go in a car. Yeah, it was actually um, H4. This is, this is H3, H3, I think. But H4, the engine that I built it for, is on the bench at home. This is my spare engine. And H4 was the motor show car from 1906. Cool, I've had some. Yeah, had, this has all had a bit of a smack up. Yeah. But this is only a, an aluminium casing. It only holds the insulation in. Oh, I see, it's just a sort of shroud, yeah. yeah in, in point of fact, this engine was in a dreadful state. It was in a field for 50 odd years. And all the bits and pieces were really? rusted solid, all, all of well, good on you. and everything else. Good on all. you for saving it, that's absolutely brilliant. So then this is, what, the boiler? That's a, that's a monotube steam generator. Flash oh, look the, in there? Yeah. yeah. So how does it, what happens in there then? The, the, it, Water's in, that's a water tank. Water. There's 200 and, no, 320 odd feet of coils in, there's eight coils. Copper? And, 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 no, the steel. Steel. They're, they're half inch ID, three, uh, nearly three quarters inch OD. Went to the scrapyard and bought a thread cutting machine. Yes. And, and which runs very, very slowly. And I put two big discs on it in the square and, and the coil suck, bends in between the discs, rolls in. Brilliant. It takes me 25 seconds to, work, to do a coil. That's right, yeah. <laughs> So, so there's a, so there's flames so this like a gas hob essentially yeah, at the bottom. Yeah, it's a ferocious thing. Two thousand blue flames. The water comes. Cold water come, comes out cold there. Cold water comes through there. And it comes through the pumps. Uh, it comes through the pumps. That through there. Yeah. Through there. Up here. Through the pumps here. Yeah. Top pump and bottom pump. That's going ch -ch 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 very fast. And then it pumps down through the flow motor. And the flow motor controls when when water goes through it. This needle opens up and that opens the fuel. So if you have water going to the boiler, fuel goes to the boiler, water comes off, fuel comes off. Right. Right, so now that, so, so you've always, you're gonna get red hot steam there in a few seconds, you know, in 30 seconds, you'll probably get a thousand PSL. So seconds. that creates the steam. That creates the steam. That's so it's the go, hot water mixed with what fuel. In, in, this, in this thing with a blow lamp underneath, it gets hot very fast. Right. Okay, so, so you're getting producing too much steam, so you've got to shut it off. So there's a bypass at the back here, to, if, if it goes too much, too much is going through, it bypasses at the back. But also it bypasses on the thermostat, and it bypasses, this is a pressure regulator. 
When, so at 800 psi, it bypasses the water, right. so the fire goes off again. Oh, uh, so it regulates it. So it regulates it by, by this thing, flow motor. And the, 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 we have a pilot light which runs most of the day. Like a, so, yeah, uh, like a, a little, boiler. Little, like little, a little small pilot light, yeah. which heats the vaporizer up, which vaporizes the fuel to a gas, which then squirts When you say fuel, the, do you mean petrol? petrol diesel, like petrol diesel mixture in there. That's what's in there. 50 psi. Oh, that's under pressure 50, as well. 55 psi. And there's pilot light fuel in here, which is hexane. Wow. Which is at the same pressure. Why have you got two steering wheels? Uh, one for turning left, one for turning right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I know I don't, I don't, I don't understand the scheme, but yeah. No, no. When, when, this is a throttle. Oh, is it? So, so when, for instance, if I'm going up through the hairpin at Prescott, you open your throttle, and it should stay there, but it's actually spring-loaded to return. <laughs> it's only it's okay. very spring-loaded at the moment because I've done that deliberately. But it's normally spring-loaded because because the English law now is rules to default. Racing. Yeah, the just in case something happens. Yeah. yeah. So, but you open your throttle and and your back end steps out of line, so you steer into it. Wow. So 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 you you work the two together, keeping your back end sliding. This must be a real hand wheel drive. Spin, yeah. Just um, yeah. You can't um, let anyone drive it. No. It must have that first drive in this must have been terrifying for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. Honestly, well, it's, it's you've opened my eyes. Yeah. Well, there you are. You see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love Can't it. You get it working on the repair shop. <laughs> that would be lovely. Yeah. yeah no, Charlie. You need to come down and fix it. Yeah. <laughs>
is Puff the Puffing Devil, am I right? That's right. It's a replica of Richard Trevithick's very first high pressure steam locomotive to run on the road. So this, out, the original one of these, outdates all of these other yes. engines around. 1801 yeah. this was on the road. When? 1801. 1801. Do you know what happened to the original one? Yes, it made three journeys. And unfortunately on the last journey it toppled over, so they righted it, put it into a shed, went off to have lunch in a local hotel, and when we came back they found a big fire. So oh it no! Down. It burned down? Yes. Gone. Gone. So we just recycled the engine and made it into a stationary engine. A week has actually gone past since I was at the steam fair. Wasn't it brilliant? I feel like a steam powered race car may be on the cards in the future. But um, anyway, I'm back in the workshop and guess what's happening? We're working on the coffee van with... <laughs> Hello everyone. <laughs> John's here. This is gonna be next week's video. So make sure you watch it. Thanks so much. See you next time. Ta-ta. <laughs> <laughs>